A very warm welcome to all uh, to commemorate India's 75th year of independence and encourage young minds to choose science and technology as a career option. Regional Center for Biotechnology is organizing a webinar series as a part of TBT Science Setu program. Today's webinar is prepared by our young and bright students, Lavi, Smriti, Naman, and Krishna. They will showcase the life and works of eminent scientist Dr. Darshan Ranganathan, who was known as one of the most prolific organic chemists in India for her work in bioorganic chemistry and also in simulating protein fold folding. And in addition to the presentation, uh, we will also present a virtual tour of RCP campus and its facility, which will be followed by a question and answer session with Dr. Rajinder Murtiani, who is assistant professor at RCP. Now, without further ado, let's invite our team for the presentation. Thank you. Traditionally, involvement of women in science and technology have been challenging. Our cultural and social framework have made it difficult for women to succeed in science in the past century. Yet, several Indian women scientists have contributed immensely to science and technology. But somehow, their contributions are not been talked about and have been forgotten with time. If we examine deeper in the pages of history, we will see that the contribution of women in science has been incomparable. It has been a popular belief that the fields of science, technology, engineering and mathematics are only for men to find success in. One of the many women who defied this notion and tread solely making her own trail was Dr. Darshan Ranganathan. Dr. Darshan Ranganathan was a prolific organic chemist who worked in bioorganic chemistry, protein folding, and supramolecules. She was more than a star. She was a comet in the chemical horizon, shedding brilliance at prodigious cost of energy and vanishing at the apex of her career. Darshan was born in Karulbagh. New Delhi on 4th of June 1941 and was the third child to Sri Shanti Swaroop and Sri Mati Vidyavati Markan. Even at the young age, she was full of life and was fond of music, dancing and drawing, excess of which many times got her in trouble. Dr. Ranganathan completed her early education in R. Samaj Girls Primary School, Delhi and Indraprastha Higher Secondary School. Darshan was a brilliant student and always stood first. Her teacher, Ms. S. V. L. Ratan, greatly influenced her to pursue chemistry and make a career out of it. Darshan went to Delhi University for her doctoral studies and there she worked under the guidance of legendary professor T. R. Sheshadri who was a chemist, academician, writer, and HOD of chemistry at Delhi University. She completed her PhD in chemistry in the year 1967. While pursuing her PhD, Darshan was hired as a lecturer at Miranda House College and later became head of the chemistry department in the same college. During her PhD at the University of Delhi, she studied about latifolin, a compound obtained from the plant Delbergia latifolia, which is a medicinal plant. Tannins obtained from the bark of this plant are used to make medicines for diarrhea, indigestion, and leprosy. She studied the mechanism behind the synthesis of latifolin dimethyl ether, ionic displacements in latifolin system, 
and its photo rearrangement. This work led her to publish many articles in reputed journals like Tetrahedron and Current Sciences. Following by her hard work in PhD, Darshan earned herself the coveted Senior Research Scholarship of the Royal Commission for the Exhibition of 1851 and moved to Imperial College London in 1967 for her postdoctoral research. During her postdoctoral research, Darshan carried out remarkable work in the group of Professor D. H. R. Barton. Professor Derek Harold Richard Barton was an English organic chemist and Nobel Prize laureate for 1969. During her postdoc at Imperial College London, she worked on cycloartenol, a biologically active compound found in jackfruit. Though jackfruit was not available in London during that time, it was the commitment of Dr. Ranganathan towards her work that she got jackfruits exported from Delhi to London in dry form with the help of her mother. Work from Dr. Barton's lab had so much impact that it is discussed even today in group meetings of various laboratories. And Dr. Ranganathan contributed very significantly to his legacy by studying cycloartenol in depth during her tenure of three years and she was able to publish many articles with him. Darshan returned back to India in 1969. She met Dr. Subramanyam Ranganathan at Indo-Soviet Binational Conference on Natural Products and both got married on 4th June 1970. They were blessed with son Anand in 1972 who is now a renowned scientist at Special Center for Molecular Medicines, Jawaharlal Nehru University, where his lab works on directed evolution and pathogenesis. On 16th June 1970, just 12 days after her marriage, Darshan joined her husband's lab at IIT Kanpur as a research fellow. The implementation of an unofficial rule prevented spouses from joining the same department in the research institute. Though at that time she had no fellowship but was extremely happy to work in the laboratory environment. Dr. Subramanyam Ranganathan was an incredibly supportive husband, something that was very uncommon in the societal context of their time. They worked together at IIT Kanpur for several years. Dr. Subramanyam writes and quote, I told her that from the very first day, we would share my resources as an assistant professor of the department by the way of students, equipments, chemicals, project funds, and that we will work in different domains of research. Though she did not have any permanent position at IIT Kanpur, Darshan did exceedingly well on her own. She published independently and became member of the Indian Academy of Sciences. At IIT Kanpur, she went on to author many books with her husband, such as Challenging Problems in Organic Reaction Mechanisms in 1972 and Art in Biosynthesis, the Synthetic Chemist Challenge in 1976. One of their most famous books is known as Current Highlights in Organic Chemistry. Not only did this book gain world recognition, it also pioneered the research into figuring out organic reaction mechanisms. Yes, those are the same reaction mechanisms so widely and essentially taught in school today. At IIT Kanpur in 1974, she published her first Jack's paper along with her husband in which she communicated for the very first time a one-step reaction mechanism for synthesis of prostaglandin intermediates. She continued to work in her husband's laboratory for many years and published articles in great numbers. She brought in a fresh wave to organic chemistry, with most problems having their roots in manifestations of the nature. She ventured into domains that others feared to tread 
and she succeeded brilliantly. Hans Krebs, a renowned scientist which all of us are familiar with, received 1953 Nobel Prize for Physiology and Medicine for unraveling the process of excretion of urea by Krebs cycle. Dr. Ranganathan demonstrated in her laboratory the chemical simulation of this process which was a magnificent achievement of her research career. Imidazole, as we all know, is an organic chemical compound that is imperative in the production of antifungal drugs and antibiotics. ATP imidazole cycle was one of the reactions she simulated in her laboratory where nature creates a daughter imidazole from parent imidazole in a cyclic operation and she put this concept to practice by creating imidazole reducing machine that is the autonomous reproduction of imidazole. Without it, the pharmaceutical industry would have a gaping hole. By creating a way to produce this important ingredient in the lab, Dr. Ranganathan helped us revolutionize pharmaceutics. Darshan got her first real job in 1992 at Regional Research Laboratory, Trivandrum, now known as CSIR National Institute for Interdisciplinary Science and Technology. There, she set up an independent laboratory for bioorganic research. In 1998, at the invitation of Dr. Raghavan, then director of Indian Institute of Chemical Technology, the couple moved to Hyderabad where Dr. Darshan Ranganathan became the deputy director. Her keen observation and closer association with the nature made her realize how important biomolecules are simply made by aggregation of smaller units. It ushered her to perhaps the most productive phase of her life, supramolecular chemistry. Name any example of biomolecular architecture such as membranes, ion channels, ionophores, nanotubes, cyclic and hybrid peptides. All these she designed, assembled in a laboratory, in most cases had their structure established by X-ray crystallography. She studied their properties and compared with that of natural system. She became a wizard in conjuring supramolecules such as hairpin loops, double helices and beta sheets etc. She played on molecules like an instrumentalist and creating divine melodies with minimum tones. Not only Darshan was a world-renowned organic chemist herself, she also worked with some of the most remarkable female scientists around the world. The most notable of her collaboration was with Dr. Isabella L. Carley. Isabella was from the Laboratory for the Structure of Matter, Naval Research Laboratory in Washington, USA. She and Darshan worked together for seven years but never once met. At a time when technology was not as advanced and overseas communication was purely through written word, these two women managed to leap through barriers in the progress of science around the world. Together, they published around 24 papers with many articles in JAKS, an international journal of peptide and protein research. Darshan was one of the most prolific organic chemists in India. It is like crystals of glutamate, cysteine, perfectly aligned nanotubes and double barrel nanotubes. In last five years of her career, she had published 16 papers in the Journal of the American Chemical Society, 6 in the Journal of Organic Chemistry, and many others. During all these years in research, Darshan received many accolades, such as National Science Academy Fellowship in 1991 the Indian National Science Academy Award in 1996, A.V. Ramarao Foundation Award by JNCSR in 1999, 
थर्ड वर्ल्ड अकेडमी साइंसेज अवार्ड इन केमिस्ट्री इन नाइनटीन जवाहरलाल नेहरू बर्थ सेंटीनरी विजिटिंग फेलोशिप इंसा इन 2000 थाउजेंड एंड सुखदेव एंडाउमेंट लेक्चर फ्रॉम नेशनल केमिकल लेबोरेटरी In describing Darshan's personality, Dr. Subramanyam remembers and writes with her expensive kanjivaram sarees and the big red bindi on her forehead, she always appeared elegant to the extent that after one of her lectures at a symposium in Bangalore, a German professor commented that she reminded him of a picture of an Indian goddess. We all laughed at the time but I think this statement in fact summarizes everything about Darshan her great warmth quiet dignity humility equanimity and fortitude during 1995 to 1996 Dr Subramanyam had a severe attack of brain tb he writes Darshan literally saved my life at her own cost but the dice is of her destiny turn and she was herself diagnosed with breast cancer the first evident instance of her illness was seen during her acceptance speech in tehran but the discomfort was attributed to a problem in her respiratory tract she had been detected a small growth in her right breast but did not tell anyone by the time anyone knew growth was large and mastectomy was performed soon unfortunately metastasis was detected in mid 2000 and in spite of all that anyone could do she passed away on 4th june exactly on her 60th birthday in 2001 although she was suffering immensely she worked hard to the very end and no one could believe that seeing her ever cheerful demeanor In a world where the representation of women in the fields of science, technology, engineering and maths was quite low, the legacy left behind by the women like Darshan was a guiding force for many girls who want to make mark in the field of science. She was a star for such a wonderful human being the end should come so early and so painfully is indeed a cruel twist of destiny she fought her long suffering just as bravely dr subramanyam says that their time together were the golden years that went by a dream never to return one of the greatest feats of darshan was she single handedly funded most of her working years through fellowships without any position with all the hard work and excellence darshan achieved unparalleled heights in organic chemistry after her death in 2001 as a small tribute to darshan's fierce profile the indian national science academy kindly agreed to institute a biennial lecture in her memory to an outstanding woman scientist regardless of the domain of research I hope you enjoyed and admired the journey of Dr. Ranganathan. She is indeed a true inspiration and a self-made pioneer in the field of organic chemistry. Now, let's take a quick tour of RCB campus and its facility.
You are welcome to ask any query regarding RCP program post this video. So for that, you are requested to post and type in your questions in the comments box. Thank you. Please start the RCP video. Regional Center for Biotechnology is located in a tranquil environment along the Gurugram Faridabad Expressway. It is an autonomous institute established under auspices of UNESCO by the Department of Biotechnology, Government of India. The primary focus of RCB is to provide world-class education, training to create high-quality human resource in biotechnology and conduct innovative research at the interface of multiple disciplines. The infrastructure at RCB has developed at a rapid pace since inception of the institution in 2010 with state-of-the-art research labs, teaching labs, innovative classrooms, central instrumentation facilities, small animal facility, biosafety level 3 facility, a bio repository and state-of-the-art advanced instrumentation facilities like the advanced technology platform center and a bio incubator which serves as a reservoir for incubating ideas in the area and help them reach commercialization. There are various areas of research in RCB. The research group under the area titled Cell Biology, Development and Behavior focus on unlocking the secrets of cells, how they divide and how stem cells develop into muscle in addition to studying the cellular and molecular origins of how organisms behave. Areas of agricultural biotechnology aim to tackle some issues by harnessing the existing genetic diversity in plants and their inherent capacities to adapt to abiotic and biotic stress conditions in order to develop innovative and durable methods of crop improvement. Groups working on infectious diseases, both bacterial and viral, aim at developing novel therapeutic strategies against infectious agents. Using tools such as mass spectrometry and microscopy, these researchers will shed light on cellular and molecular basis of bacterial infection and the response of the human host towards these infections. They are trying to find novel solutions to protect the people against diseases such as chikungunya virus, Japanese encephalitis virus and dengue virus. Protein structure and design groups are structural biologists who have a molecular view of life and use cutting-edge methods like macromolecular X-ray crystallography or cryo-electron microscopy to imagine biological molecules in their functional state. This information is used to develop novel therapeutic strategies against pathogenic bacteria and viruses and for protein engineering to prepare molecules with desired properties. Researchers at RCB are also working towards developing innovative biotechnological applications such as novel drug delivery systems, new diagnostic tools, novel engineered protein with improved desired proteins and improved methods to obtain desired products in large scale. These researchers subject laboratory and clinical samples to cutting-edge microscopy, proteomics and genomics methods coupled with flow cytometry to shed light on the etiology of disease and utilize this knowledge to identify solutions to these disorders. The quality of research conducted at RCB is excellent with faculty winning top honors like the Shanti Swarup Bhatnagar, the National Bioscience, the Innovative Young Biotechnologist Awards and the Ramanujan, Ramalinga Swami and DBT Welcome Alliance Fellowships. Since research-based learning is the hallmark of RCB, the academic programs here are deeply enmeshed with the research programs. The academic programs fulfill RCB's core mandate to provide quality education and training in the area of life sciences and biotechnology.
The PhD program in biotechnology is for students who are interested in working at the interface of multiple disciplines to find novel solutions for problems in health and agriculture. RCB has recently started integrated PhD program in biotechnology offered to students with graduate degree in any discipline of science from India and abroad. The program provides extensive learning opportunities in the broad field of life sciences and biotechnology. RCB has also recently initiated an interdisciplinary doctoral programs in the area of biostatistics and bioinformatics through collaboration with the global pharmaceutical giant GlaxoSmithKline GSK being conducted in partnership with other institutions by creating a virtual faculty pool. The focus of this program is on creating specialized manpower for the healthcare industry. As an outreach activity, RCB also offers research training programs for research-driven undergraduate and postgraduate students of science from various universities. Trainees get a realistic experience of several facets of modern biological research that sets the tone of their embarking on a research career. Throughout the year, RCB hosts and organizes regular academic events like the RCB Bioimaging School, national and international conferences, seminars, symposia and training in the frontier area of basic and applied sciences in topics such as infectious diseases, drug discovery etc. to disseminate advanced knowledge, exchange ideas, foster national and international collaborations, student exchange and networking opportunities. RCB also holds scientific communication and communication workshops for the benefit of young scientists in India. RCB has a fully functional library and houses 500 scientific textbooks and 100 administrative books in multiple copies. In addition, an electronic library provides access to a vast range of primary literature in the form of peer-reviewed journals and reviews. RCB offers faculty residences and excellent students' facilities including on-campus air-conditioned hostel accommodation, modern library, meeting rooms, seminar rooms and auditorium. The hostel and student facilities are conveniently located and only a short walk away from the classrooms and laboratories. In addition, the campus also has sports and recreation facilities which encourages all-round development of the students. Campus also provides a child care facility for all students and staff to help them continue their studies and work while their babies are being taken care of. Kridangan, the creche, housed in the faculty building, is an asset on campus for employees of NCR Biotech Cluster. The spacious cafeteria in the campus serves hygienic, nutritious and delicious meals and beverages at reasonable cost. RCB also contributes towards creating resource for researchers from all over India and has engaged with institutions such as the European Synchrotron Radiation Facility in France towards this end. RCB is also involved with the UNESCO towards developing policy to ensure sustainable development at the global level and specifically in the Asian region. RCB is a young institute which is growing day by day with excellent opportunities for young people to make a career in the area of biotechnology. Uh, so may I now please invite Dr. Rajinder, uh, if the, you have some questions, Dr. Rajinder, please uh, answer those. Yeah. So one of the student is asking 
uh, what are the opportunities and ways of uh, acquiring higher education from RCB? As we just showed in the video, we have very active higher education programs in terms of integrated PhD program and a direct PhD program. And for which, uh, for the integrated PhD program, uh, we, we intake every year students, uh, bachelors pass out, and we, we look for a national level examination clearance. And uh, we also provide a fellowship to these integrated PhD students. And one can look into the details of the, uh, the program and uh, other deadlines for applications on our website. Similarly, for PhD programs, uh, we have a PhD in biotechnology and PhD in bioinformatics and biostatistics. And for these programs, we advertise twice a year. The students can apply. Uh, and again, one should have a national level JRF fellowship that they can activate at RCB for higher education. Um, one more student is asking about what sort of cancer biology programs are going on at RCB. So we have a very active and dynamic group working in the area of cancer biology at RCB. Uh, groups are working on how cells divide and how cells communicate with each other through nanotubes. And these sort of studies are uh, led by Dr. Shivram. Then we have groups uh, grouped by Dr. Karthikeyan who is looking into uh, cilia and central centrosome biology. Then uh, we, we have a stem cell biology group, which is led by Dr. Prasad Abnave. Um, our group is interested in understanding role of uh, interorganal communication through calcium signaling and how it regulates and contribute to cancer progression. And we also have a, a very dynamic group uh, looking into biomolecules and uh, delivery mechanisms for uh, better delivery of chemotherapeutics uh, led by Dr. Avinash Bajaj and uh, the further uh, details of these groups and kind of uh, research that they are conducting can be looked into uh, at RCB website. I think these were the two questions that were from the audience. Uh, thank you, Rajinder. I hope you all enjoyed the journey of Dr. Ranganathan and uh, 